In a previous video, we were studying solutions to the Laplace's equation in spherical coordinates as a way to study the temperature of a ball, the steady state temperature of a ball, where the temperature was given on its boundary. And we came up with this general solution involving a sub l's and b sub l's for the temperature. And so now we need to ask, what are the a sub l's and b sub l's? How are we going to find them? Well, what we need to do is we need to impose our boundary conditions on the boundary of our sphere in order to figure these things out. So first note that uh, as you take r go to zero, the temperature of the ball that we're interested in um, shouldn't go crazy. In fact, the temperature should just be something finite. Okay, it, that sounds perfectly reasonable, but it turns out that requiring that the temperature at the center of the sphere not blow up is actually really important. Because if we notice at the general solution, as you take R go to zero, the terms that look like B sub L over R to the L plus one, they're going to blow up as R goes to zero. And so these are bad terms for us. They would cause the temperature to blow up at the center of the sphere. And so we need to set all of the B sub L's equal to zero for all of the L in order for the temperature to be nice and finite and so that things don't blow up in the center. Okay, so that gets rid of fully half of our coefficients that we needed. So now what we're left over with for our solution for the temperature inside of the ball is a sum over all L, A sub L, R to the positive L, P sub L of cosine theta. Okay, so now let's impose our boundary condition at little r equal to big R as a function of theta. And if you remember from the previous video, that was u naught over 2, 1 plus cosine theta. So that tells us that the combination u naught over 2, 1 plus cosine theta must be equal to the infinite sum L equal to 0 to infinity, A sub L, big R to the L, P sub L of cosine theta. It's big R to the L because uh, we impose little r equal to big R at the boundary. This should look familiar. This is, after all, just a Fourier Legendre series. And so we can solve this in a similar way. So in general, for solving a Fourier Legendre series that looks something like this, if you have some function of theta, here it could be any function of theta, and that's equal to the sum over L, A sub L, let's put the R to the L in there, P sub L of cosine theta, then you can always find the coefficients by using the usual result. So A sub L is equal to 2 sub L over 2 sub L plus 1 over 2 times r to the L. And then you do an integral from 0 to pi of your function of theta times p sub L of cosine theta times sine of theta d theta. Again, this result just comes from the orthogonality of the Legendre polynomials. And so you can derive it using a similar technique as you do with Legendre polynomials. OK. So, but that's a really hard set of integrals to do, because you would really need to do essentially an infinite number of integrals in order to determine all of the a sub l's. And so instead, we're generally going to try and do this by i. And what we mean by i is, let's just write out what we had before, u naught over 2, 1 plus cosine theta. And that's equal to the sum of all the a sub l's, r to the l, P sub L of cosine theta. OK, and let's just write that out. So that's A0 times P0 of cosine theta plus A1 R P1 of cosine theta plus A2 R squared P2 of cosine theta, et cetera, et cetera. There's an infinite number of terms. Let's just write out a few of them. Now, recalling what P sub 0 of cosine theta is, so that's just 1, P1 of cosine theta is just cosine theta and p2 of cosine theta, just to recall what that is, so that recalls 1 half 3 cosine squared minus 1, et cetera, et cetera. So you can write this in terms of cosine theta, a polynomial in cosine theta. So that becomes just a0 plus a1 r cosine theta plus a2 r squared 1 half 3 cosine squared theta minus 1, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just plugging in for the p sub l's in, for each l. 
Okay, so now you can just by inspection kind of match the terms, match the coefficients of cosine of theta on both sides of the equation. So in particular, in order for the constant term to match on both sides, you need a0 to be u0 over 2. In order for the coefficient of cosine to match, you need a1 to be u0 over 2 times r. There's no cosine squared on the left-hand side, so a2 has to be 0. And by a similar set of reasoning, a3, a4, a5, all of the a sub l's uh, have to be 0 as long as l is not equal to 0 or 1. Okay, so then we can take these a sub l's that we just calculated up here, namely just the a sub 0 and a sub 1, and insert them back into our expression for the temperature as a function of r and theta. So if you recall, we had this infinite sum, l from 0 to infinity, a sub l, r to the l, pl of cosine theta. But now we'll just insert these in for a sub l. We only get two terms. We get a0, r to the 0, p0 of cosine theta, plus a1, r to the 1, p1 of cosine theta. And in principle, there's the other ones, but they're all 0 because all of the other a sub l's are 0. Okay, so then we can plug in for a sub 0, and we get u0 over 2. Plug in for a sub 1, we get u0 over 2 r, and then there's an r cosine theta. And so this is u, the temperature, as a function of r and theta. And then this is indeed our final solution. It's our temperature inside the ball as a function of r and theta. Well, that's what we're after, uh, after all. So let's just take a minute to interpret what this looks like. In particular, note that the temperature at the center of the sphere, say at r equal to 0, is just u0 over 2. It's just half of the temperature between the u0 at the top of the sphere and 0 at the bottom of the sphere. So if we draw our ball here and we say that the temperature at the top is u0 and the temperature at the bottom is 0, then everywhere, in fact, along the equator, everywhere of theta equal to pi over 2 has a temperature halfway between. So the temperature tries to um, essentially go as fast as possible from u0 to 0 in as smooth a way as possible. Okay, so this is how you solve a problem using separation of variables in spherical coordinates and how you impose the boundary conditions.